Hi guys, it's Moz here from Moz6510 Models, a channel dedicated to help you become a better scale modeler. Today on the workbench, I received this. This is an Airfix Vintage Classic. The, this is the Handley Page Jet Stream. Airfix have been releasing a lot of these recently, uh, these vintage classics. Basically, they're reboxes of kits that have stood the test of time and people have requested them for some reason personally i think they're brilliant i do have a few issues with a lot of the vintage classics in particular this one but there's a reason behind it but i'm going to get into that further on in the video so if you had this kit when you were a youngster you would probably have built the the model that's inside the tooling is exactly the same and it has been around for 50 plus years it was first released in 1969 it was then re-released again in a new box in 1972 the same again in 1973 and then there was nothing happening until 1987 when they re-released it again as a re-box and this time the picture wasn't an artist impression it was a picture of the model complete then again in 2005 it was released as a special edition for those that were members of the old airfix club great idea and then it was released again as a vintage classic back in 2019 so over the years, it's been released six times. New tooling back in 1969. Just as a fun fact, it was in fact two years after this plane was put in service that they produced this model. So it must have been a really important development for a kit to be made that quickly after a plane had been launched. It means that it was probably looked upon as the future of aviation. The Handley Page Jetstream is a small twin turboprop airliner and it had a pressurized fuselage the aircraft was designed to meet the requirements of the united states commuter and regional airline market the design was later improved and built by british aerospace as the bae jetstream 31 and the bae jetstream 32 and it was it featured different turboprop engines Handley Page was in an awkward position in the 1960s. It was wanting to remain independent of the big two British companies, that was Hawker Siddeley and the British Aircraft Corporation, but without the money needed to develop a large new airliner that would keep it in the market. So after studying the problem, it decided that its next product would be a highly competitive small airliner instead, filling a niche it identified for a 12 to 18 seat high speed design. The American salesman's and modification engineer Jack Riley claimed to have written the design specifications. The design pulled intense interest in the US when it was first introduced and an order of 20 had been placed even before the drawings were complete. Charles Joy was responsible for that design. So this plane was basically out there and it was used by the military. It had a crew of two. It could have 16 passengers. The length of it was about 47 foot. So it was quite a, a, a short plane. The role of this plane was a regional airliner. It was manufactured by Handley Page, but then it was then manufactured by Scottish Aviation when Handley Page went bust. The first flight of this was in 1967, hence why I was impressed to see that it was actually put out there as a model by 1969 that's very very quick and believe it or not the final one retired back in 2011 66 were built over the space of 1967 to 1975 and as it was said before when it was taken on by british aerospace it was developed into the jetstream 31 and the jetstream 41 so there's quite a bit of history there with the plane so let's have a quick look at the box the box itself is the old looking style it's the old artwork so there's no change there you'll notice with the vintage classics that the name oh sorry the number has changed only by adding a letter so this one now is called the a o three o one two v v for vintage so you have the same artwork side of the box you have your bump obviously you know your warning labels etc telling you where it was manufactured it has now got cartograph decals in it. So 
there's an improvement there on the decals. Edge of the box, you have the uh, same artwork as you have on the top. On the side, this is what kind of puzzles me. However, production of the Jetstream was taken over by Scottish Aviation, which I've said before, and the Jetstream would go on to serve as the RAF standard multi-engine pilot trainer for many years, and later as an observer trainer with the Royal Navy. So, this is my little bump, or my little beef, I should say, with the idea of bringing out a vintage classic. Why didn't they change the decals into something British. It will have the option of having a British decal system for this plane. That would really make it a bit more special, wouldn't it? Or even if they did it like this, a vintage classic, but they've re-released it with the Royal Navy. And they did a blue version and they and they so the, the Royal Navy was blue and they have a red version which is the RAF. But they they were more used for the british market you know, we bought quite a few and to have this in the american i know it's vintage but then go for the the british markings as as an added extra all right just 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 a little bit of, you know my thought on it really comes with one flying hour it's a skill level two okay and you can buy this from the airfix website there's a bitly link down below where you can purchase it it'll take you straight to the website and they i think they're 11 pound 99 to buy all right, so there you go. It's a top opening box, and inside you have the instructions, you have a bag of parts, and here you are, the decals. There's the decals, they've not changed, except for they have been manufactured by Cartograph, and they do look really nice. You can see there's some really nice deep markings there. You can see nice and crisp, obviously, because they're Cartograph, and no, for me personally, they've always been good when you put them on a plane, they, they go down really, really nice. But as I was saying, um, I know A model do a version of the Handy Page Jetstream and they do have both um, decals. So you've got the red and the blue for the Royal Navy and the RAF. But yeah, it would have been nice to have done something a little bit different with this kit. In the 11 .99, you know, I did feel that it was a little bit overpriced, but you know, it is, it's still gonna be that old kit in the bag, which I've got here. So let's open the, open the bag in the box you get quite a variety of sprues here the it's not like a, a two sprue wonder here you do have quite a bit of detail for a kit that's nigh on 51 years old so let's have a little nosy at it so you have the underside of the wing there it's numbered up 46 there's no recess lines here it has got some detail on the underside of the wing there Let's get the fuselage. We're just going to put the fuselage together gently just to see that you've got some pins there. And it is uh, just put together just gently. There you are. It's not looking too bad together. There's, you know, you can see there's, uh, there's, a, there's a few marks there on the top there. A little bit of blemish in, but it's nothing too drastic. Little bit of a, a mark there on the nose, but as again, you know, you're looking at a very, very old tool. Nothing here that I wouldn't expect. But these are the tools that, you know, these are the models that I believe make make a modeler. You know, there's not like a shake and bake or, you know, it's not a, a glue then spray. It is you've got to really work at these things. Okay, so yeah, not too bad fitting there. You you can do a little bit of sanding down, etc. And the panel lines, there they are, they're all, they're all sticking out, so there's no recessed panel lines on this one. On this side here, you've got parts of the engine. You've got the uh, ladder for the, the stairs for coming off the side. Some little pieces there. You know, be very careful, it's not, this is quite thin. There you go, that's that bit there. Moving on, more of the uh, cabin and inside the fuselage there, there's your landing gear there. All pretty nice. All numbered, so you can't get anything wrong. Some more of the wing there. Let's put the turbo prop in. There's your wings, your, your tail, your ailerons. Some nose cones there, that one's quite loose. So the wheels are one piece wheels on that one. Then also you have your, your two pilots there. Other bits inside, yeah, 
Not looking too bad at all. Two props there, nice props. But to be honest, there's not a lot of flash. Let's see, there's, there's some sink marks there, uh, uh, marks there. You won't see pin marks there, but you won't see them on the back of the pilots because they'll be sitting down in the seats. And exactly the same, look, they've got their uh, the hands out touching the joystick. So, yeah, there's your sprues for this. And to be fair, I can't see a lot of flash. Can you see a lot of flash? Because I can't. I see a little bit of uh, blemishing, but, you know, you, you sand all this out anyway before you spray or you put on a decent to put on a decent base primer base that will that. then you've got your plastic not too bad they, they they're not perfect obviously a few blemishes there no sink marks no pin marks in them and there's the cockpit window there in one piece you can give them a bit of a rub up put it in some clear or something to uh, get them nice and shiny there you are. So there's all the bits for the model. So already by picking this up, going by just by the amount of bits there, you know that it's going to be one of those exploded views put together jobs. It's not going to be step by step like Airfix do so incredibly well. I think the, the uh, instructions are going to be based on what they had back in the 1960s, 70s and 80s. So, yeah, the exploded view there, two fuselage bits. You, you, put, you do the cockpit there singly. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pieces or ten pieces, including two pilots there. So you you know it's pretty much all together there, the bulkhead, fuselage, put it all together, put the uh frames in on the side so you've got your your platform door there. There's your clear parts going in there either side. Then you start on building the the props for the turbo props. Side three, side four. Is that a choice? I'm not too sure if that's a choice. No, I think it's just two build-ups there. But obviously, then everything else goes on top. Then you put your, the tops of the wings on, under side wings, ailerons, the fins. Everything goes on the back. And then all this goes underneath. That's quite a lot of pieces there. All goes in underneath. So you put the glass in last. I think, and then everything else, as I said, it's just, there's a lot to go underneath. There's there's your, your door and your ladder all glued together. Yeah, undercarriage there, gear in. Yeah, so everything all goes together there. And that's basically the instruction. So it's, yeah, definitely a level two. It's definitely an old kit. But yeah, it, it just would have been nice if Airfix did do something a little bit different. I know that they're trying to keep it much of what they released it back in 1969. But yeah, just do something a little bit different, you know, just do a different uh, different decals and different call outs, etc. Because this plane was really Royal, a Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy and you still got the US Air Force. You can, I suppose, go to Hannitz and see if they've got an aftermarket set of decals. But yeah, it would have been just something different for you, FX. You know, if you watch your videos, I don't know if you do, it would have been nice for just something a little bit different, you know. Add so add something new to a vintage classic because, you know, decals or decals, however you want to say it, they do make a difference. Sometimes you look at a kit and you, you tend to not buy it because it doesn't look right, you know. And I just think maybe they could have done it with this one. Just put a second set of decals in to make it a bit more British. Something different, something inside the box. But anyway, I've ranted on too much. Before we go, there is a Scale Model Club on Facebook. If you'd like to join that, go to Facebook and sign up to the Scale Model Club. And if you like the video, click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and ring that bell to be notified on any new videos. Any questions, any comments, put them in the box below and I do reply. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.